Are you ready for a new adventure? Welcome to Malahide Castle, in County Dublin, Ireland. A magnificent medieval castle with a dramatic 800-year heritage. Situated in 260 acres of lush parkland, Malahide Castle includes the ruins of a church, beautifully manicured lawns, the fairy trail, and the walled botanic gardens, which includes the only butterfly house in Ireland. The Talbot family settled down in this area in 1185 when King Henry II gifted the lands and harbour to Richard Talbot, a knight who came to Ireland with King Henry II in 1185, for his services to the crown. The original stronghold built on the lands was a wooden fortress but eventually a stone structure was built in its place. The Talbots lived in the estate for eight centuries between 1185 and the 1970s, except for a short time between 1649 and 1660 when their lands were seized by Cromwellian soldiers and the castle was occupied by Miles Corbett, Lord Chief Baron of Ireland until Cromwell died and the lands were returned to them. Miles Corbett's ghost is one of the five that haunts Malahide Castle today, but more on that later. The oldest parts of the castle date from the late 12th century, though it was enlarged during King Edward IV's reign. The towers were added in 1625. Four main rooms are open to the public, the wood panelled oak room, added in 1475, is one of the best examples of 16th century panelled room. The small and great drawing rooms, which were added between 1765 and 1782, when the castle's west wing was reconstructed due to a fire. The fourth is the Great Hall, one of the oldest rooms, from around the 1400s. The hall displays Talbot's family history in paintings. Upon their return, Lady Talbot insisted that the castle be stripped of its defenses to make it less attractive to invaders. The castle has a very long and sometimes dark history. For example, during the Battle of Boyne, 14 family members sat down for breakfast together. By dinner time, all but one were dead. Lord Milo Talbot led a mysterious life. He was a world-renowned gardener, an expert botanist. He was also a British diplomat, and a one-time head of security for the UK Foreign Office. While at Cambridge in the 1930s, Milo was friends with the infamous Soviet spies Kim Philby and Anthony Blunt. He died in mysterious circumstances while on a Greek cruise in 1973. To make matters even stranger, the friend he was holidaying with was never interviewed. There was no post-mortem and his sister, Rose, burned all his personal papers. Stephen Talbot believes that he may in fact have been murdered, possibly by the British Secret Intelligence Service, MI6. Get a glimpse into the personal lives of the castle residents visiting the master and ladies' private bedrooms on the second floor and see the vintage toys in the nursery. Sadly, most of the furniture and art was sold to the public, but some of these items have been retrieved. Over the centuries, rooms and fortifications were added, modified and strengthened until the castle took on its current form. Lord Milo's sister, Rose, inherited the estate but had to sell it to the Irish state in 1975, partially to cover inheritance taxes. Rose died peacefully in Malahide House, Tasmania, in 2009. Since then, Malahide Castle has hosted international leaders and summits, as well as welcoming thousands of local and international visitors each year. The ruins of the Abbey Church stand on the site of an earlier, more ancient church dedicated to St. Fenwys. The earliest recorded priest in Malahide was Walter Talbot, who died in 1193. The church continued to function as a parish church, and is said to have been one of the finest in the rural deanery of Fingal. The Abbey grounds are said to include the family tombs of the Talbots. Among those buried within the ruins is Maud Plunkett who married Richard Talbot and died in 1482. She is said to haunt the castle, but we will talk about her later in the video. It is believed that Miles Corbett was responsible for taking the roof off the church around 1649 and using the lead for bullets. The church was recorded as ruinous a few years later. It was abandoned when a new parish church was built for Malahide in 1822. Covering 20 acres, the West Lawn was originally the site of a deep moat that protected Malahide Castle in medieval times. Now it is a peaceful green space dotted with trees, ornamental wooden sculptures and home to the magical fairy trail. It is also a paradise for photographers, boasting some of the best views of the castle. It includes rare trees from all over the world. The Butterfly House. Inside the castle's walled garden, you'll find the Cambridge Glass House. At first, it looks like an ordinary greenhouse, but step inside and you'll find yourself in a tropical rainforest. More than 20 butterfly species live among the tropical plants. 
In this warm climate, you'll find plenty of caterpillars and cocoons. The Butterfly House at Malahide Castle is the only one in the country. Lord Milo was a keen gardener and plant collector. His legacy to the castle is the Talbot Botanic Gardens, boasting well-landscaped areas and lawns and the extensive walled garden. This impressive collection has over 5,000 plants, mostly from the southern hemisphere. The herb garden is particularly interesting. Many of the plants noted as poisonous are mainly used for medicinal purposes. The ghosts of Malahide Castle are as much a part of the estate as the ancient woodlands and the elegant rooms. Reports go back as long as the castle's 800-year history, which is hardly surprising when you consider the tales of battles, bloodshed and broken hearts surrounding this medieval building. The first ghost is that of Sir Walter Hussey. He was killed in battle on the day of his wedding in the 15th century. He is said to wander the castle at night, groaning in pain while pointing to the spear wound on his side. There are two versions of this story. One version says he was ambushed on his way to the wedding, stabbed and killed by his rival. The other says they were married the morning of Whit Monday, 1429. A few hours later, Galtram was killed in battle, possibly by his rival. Either way, Lord Galtram's ghost haunts Malahide Castle, wandering the halls, groaning, and pointing to the spear wound in his side. It is said his newly widowed wife, Maud Plunkett, wasted no time in marrying again after his death. Some stories suggest she married the man who killed him. Her second marriage did not last and by the time of her third wedding to a Lord Chief Justice, it is said that she had become paranoid and insecure. Her ghost has been seen walking the halls, arguing with the spirit of her third husband. The third ghost is called Puck. Puck is the ghost of a jester and watchman who lived in one of the towers. He fell in love with a woman named Lady Eleonora Fitzgerald. She was detained at the castle by King Henry VIII for inciting rebellions. Some say Puck was distracted by the lady and hung himself for failing in his sentry duties. Others say Puck was rejected and hung himself in misery. It has also been suggested that the Talbots found the match unsuitable and ended it. Most versions say Puck was mysteriously stabbed through the heart on a snowy December night, just outside the castle walls. He was wearing his jester suit, complete with cap and bells. Puck was found before he died, and with his dying breath he vowed to haunt Malahide Castle. Numerous castle visitors have reported seeing the jester's face on some photos taken in the castle. There is also the ghost of the white lady. There is a painting of an anonymous lady, wearing a flowing white dress, in the Great Hall. No one knows how her portrait came to be at Malahide Castle. Nonetheless, on many occasions this young lady has been seen stepping out of her portrait to wander the castle halls. Lastly, there is the ghost of Miles Corbett. He was given the castle and the surrounding property by Oliver Cromwell. He would later face the wrath of the newly reinstated monarchy in 1662, when he was hung, drawn, and quartered at the castle. It is reported that his ghost would appear as a whole soldier in armor and then suddenly fall into four pieces. His fragmented ghost is said to appear on the anniversary of his death each year, on the 19th of April, although he has been spotted at other times as well. In addition to ghosts, there have been a number of unexplained incidents at Malahide Castle. Doors that the staff have locked simply unlock themselves. Open doors slam shut. Unseen hands push people as they're walking down hallways. Water taps turn themselves on and off. What was your favorite part of the estate? Would you like to visit? If you have visited, did you experience any strange happenings or see something you could not explain? I look forward to hearing your experiences in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know by giving me a thumbs up. For more amazing stories, please subscribe and turn on all channel notifications. I have selected another video you might like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.